So starting with this picture here, let's say I've got this object. So notice that I've shifted from lenses to mirrors. I've shifted to a mirror. Does it look like we're going to end up with a, take your time and draw this, but when you're ready, does it look like we're going to end up with a real or a virtual image here? Go ahead and just yeah. Copy. The We're going to uh, end up with a virtual image. Sounds good to me. And what's the what tells us that? Um, well, I went by the fact that um, the the lines, the rays are diverging, and diverging is negative. Now let's think about that for a second. Diverging means a negative f, f. Okay. not a negative i. Mm -hmm. I should have mentioned actually that is another mistake I see people make a lot confusing the sign conventions for f and for i. After all, let's back up for a second here. Um, is this a converging or a diverging lens? That is a, um, it's a diverging lens. You might want to take another look at our table. Converging. <laughs> so let's take a look at our table. Uh, our table should give us a quick way of deciding whether any lens is converging or diverging. So where, where, where are we in our table? That's a converging. Yeah, definitely converging. Convex lenses are always converging. So this is definitely converging. <laughs> the reason you might have hesitated is because these light rays over here didn't actually end up converging um, with each other. But this is still considered a converging lens. Okay. Um, so that table always gives the right answer. This is still considered a converging um, lens. By the way, even though they're not going to converge, they're certainly converging more than they started. Notice that this ray did get bent towards the other way, other ray. It just didn't get bent enough to make them converge. But the, uh, the original incoming rays were diverging even more than these rays were. So this does have converging power, we might say, even though it doesn't have enough converging power to make the outgoing light rays converge. But the easiest way to see this is converging is to just memorize that convex lenses are always considered converging. Now, what does that tell us about signs? Does this tell us the F or the I when we know that something's converging? Yeah. Yeah. And does it tell us that it's positive or negative? Uh, that's going to be positive. Now, the other thing we saw here is that we got a virtual image. Well, does that tell us the F or the I? It tells us the I. And does it tell us it's positive or negative? Negative. So this is an excellent example of how a positive F could go with a negative I. So we don't want to get those two things confused with each other. Uh, this actually is a very common mistake. It shouldn't be that common, though, because the focal length is a property of the device. So when you look at the device, you decide whether you have a positive or negative focal length. But the image distance is a property of the image. So you can't tell whether I is positive or negative by looking at the device. You tell whether I is positive or negative by looking at the image. OK, so we don't want to confuse those two. All right, so going back here, uh, let's see. Uh, how do we know this is going to be a virtual image? Well, um, is the image going to be where the outgoing light rays converge or where their tracebacks converge? Well, if you look at the outgoing light rays, these are never going to converge. We can see these outgoing light rays will never converge, so we're going to have to use the tracebacks. So that's the first sign that your guess was right, and this will be a virtual image. Here's the tracebacks we have to use. So the image must be here. Here would be our image. So this is a virtual image. OK? Uh, and while we're on the same uh, topic there, let's use our other definition. Um, remember that a virtual image is supposed to be on the opposite side to the outgoing light. Well, let's see. Let's actually talk that through very step by step. Which side here is the outgoing light on, the left or the right? The left. And which side is the image on, the left or the right? The right. So they are on opposite sides, and that confirms it's a virtual image. OK, so that definitely is going to be uh, virtual. Now, does this tell us about the F or the I? The I. Positive or negative? Negative. OK. It doesn't tell us that f is negative, it tells us that the i is negative. So this is another example of uh, using these sign conventions. And this is crucial because we can't use the equation until we know whether to plug in positive or negative numbers. That's our biggest challenge. While we're at it, though, um, is this a converging or a diverging mirror? It's a, it's a converging mirror. 
Uh, now, it, until you've got it memorized, you might want to just consult the table and have some diverging. Right. Yes. If you look at the table, you can see this matches diverging. Also, it kind of looks diverging, though, right? Because these light rays here are diverging from each other even more than they were originally. Correct. They were already diverging, but the mirror has made them diverge even more. So it does have diverging power. Uh, but the easiest thing is just to memorize that a convex uh, mirror is always diverging. All right, well, you'll have that in your uh, handout to memorize. Now, when we see that something's diverging, does that tell us about its i or about its f? f. And what does it tell us about the f? It's uh, negative. Right. Now, in this case, it happened that f and i both had the same sign, but that's just a coincidence. There can be any combination of signs here. Uh, all right. Uh, well, th th there can be more than one combination of signs. So we have to think about the f and the i separately. All right, so this is another good example of uh, real and virtual. By the way, in your textbook, I think they have some other definitions of real and virtual images. But those are not as good as these because um, the, the nice thing about these two definitions is they work for both lenses and mirrors. Everything we have on the board is true for both lenses and mirrors. What we're going to try to do uh, while we're studying this material is we're going to try to only learn things that are true for both lenses and mirrors. That way we don't have to learn everything twice. Everything we say for lenses will be true for mirrors. and We don't have to go through the whole subject again twice. There's some other definitions of real and virtual that might be in your textbook, but those would be different for mirrors and lenses. So it's better to stick with these definitions that are the same for mirrors and lenses. So everything we've said here would work for both a mirror and a lens. There's some other definitions that might not. And, and these are on the uh, handout. See. That's right, yeah. So the words out of my mouth, we can go out and review that. So we've already said the object distance is positive. Um, now, I said that's when the object is on the same side as the incoming light. But you can see that in a normal situation, the object is always on the same side as the incoming light. Here's the object on the same side as the incoming light. Here's the object on the same side as the incoming light. Here's the object on the same side as the incoming light. It might be pretty hard to think how the object could ever be on the opposite side of the incoming light. Well, as the handout says, that can only happen when you have multiple lenses. And I don't know if you're even going to cover that. So for you, you might always have a positive here. Focal point distance, well, converging means positive focal point. Diverging means negatives. That's crucial. And then image distance, a real image is positive, a virtual image is negative. A real image is on the same side as the outgoing light, and a virtual image is on the opposite side. So these are very important. We don't want to confuse these two lines. The, the lens or mirror type tells us the focal sign, and the image type tells us the, uh, the sign of the image. So we don't want to confuse uh, those two ideas. <coughs> Okay, so those are some very important uh, sign conventions here. As long as we're at it, we might as well discuss some other interesting principles here. Um, for example, one thing that's oftentimes important is whether an image has been magnified or shrunk. Well, take a look at this picture. Does, does it look like we get a magnified or a shrunk image? Shrunk image. Now, here's the image. Yes. Is it bigger than the object or smaller? Remember that if you think about it, we started with this object, oh, I'm sorry. and then oh, it's producing this image. Yes, it's, uh, so it's larger. Yeah. So we would call this a magnified image. Does that make sense? Yes. We call this magnified. What does it mean when the image is magnified? It means the image is bigger than the object. All right. So here's an image that's bigger than the object. We would call that magnified. about in this picture? Um, did we get a magnified or a shrunken image in this picture? Shrunken. Yeah, here we have a shrunken image. Now, unfortunately, sometimes uh, if you're not using a straight edge, it can be a little hard to tell whether you ended up with a uh, shrunken or a magnified image or uh, what. So here it's a little hard to tell whether this is magnified or shrunk. Um, but uh, in these cases, I think we can. Now, there's a sign convention for magnification as well. The magnification is indicated um, by I guess this isn't a sign convention, but that magnification is indicated by M. M is the magnification. Um, and here we actually want to focus on the absolute value of M, or the magnitude of M. Uh, so I think you know that instead of writing absolute value signs, I like to just use a dot to indicate a magnitude. So let's focus on this. Well, magnitude could be bigger than 1 or smaller than 1. <laughs> If the magnitude of M is bigger than 1, do you think that means magnified or shrunk? Yeah, magnified. Right. I think that's pretty intuitive. A magnified image. And then if magnitude of M is less than 1, we would call that shrunk. So actually, this is not a sign convention. This is the absolute value of M. 
Um, so going back to this picture here, what can you tell me about m? That m is greater than 1. Right, except we want to say the magnitude of f is bigger than 1. Um, we'll talk about the sign in a second. And what can we say about m over here? Uh, that the magnitude is less than 1. Yeah, so these dots indicate we're just focusing on the magnitude because this is shrunk. 